this video, we're going to take a look at automating the creation of a user account in multiple systems through the Hornby Line Bridge. This is really to demonstrate some of the value and time savings and efficiencies that could be saved by automating the repetitive tasks. So under System, Security and KeySafe, we may well have already defined our Azure or Office 365 um, credentials and authentication details. Uh, using an account that has the right to add users and various other actions. We may also have created and predefined, for example, our Salesforce uh, credentials to allow us to, to uh, create a user in Salesforce, as well as also defining our Hornbill um, authentication details, specifying the instance um, and the API key that we want to use in order to also create uh, the same user in Hornbill. With those set up, we can come to uh, an existing business process that we've got defined and we can look at some of the configuration options and choices we're going to use. So in the classic new starter example, where we will have a new starter progressive capture, where we'll capture the information about that new starter, there's a number of things that we might want to do. First and foremost, from the answers that we've got from the progressive capture, we might want to populate those answers into custom fields onto the request which we can subsequently use then within our integration calls to create those users in the various systems. So we might, for argument's sake, we might store a first name, a surname, we might even uh, manipulate and create their um, email address, which might be their um, user principal name in Azure, for example, by combining the answer of their first name, surname, uh, and then adding the domain to the end of that format. Again, this is all entirely um, up to you and just an example of what you may look to do. But coming under our fulfillment side, we can see here where combining a number of automated actions allows us to orchestrate uh, that behavior. So just to step through, alongside our manual tasks, configure equipment and uh, maybe even install applications, we might want to automate the creation of these user accounts. So the first thing we might do here is actually utilize one of the facilities in the Hornbill uh, integration bridge which is a utility which will randomly create a password for us. And that could also be used to match your company policy around upper lowercase number of characters, use of uh, non-numerical uh, uh, values, etc. And you could define the complexity and lengths in that option. We obviously then can take that output, um, that password as an output parameter, when we're then coming in to create that user in Azure. And here we'll be using our Hornbill integration brick option and using Azure and create user. We'll be passing through the credentials we defined in the key safe for the Office 365 account. And then if we have a look at our mandatory input requirements here, we do need to specify what their user principal name will be. And here we've used the variable picker to pass in the value that's held in custom field C, which is what we looked at previously, was a combination of their first name, surname, uh, and also the domain for the organization, just by example. Uh, the status of the account will come in, the display name, so here we're just using their first name in our example here, whether it would force the user to immediately change their password on their first attempt to log into Azure, a mail alias, and passing in then the password from the previous integration call to set that temporary password for them in Azure. Secondly then, we're going to come in and also then create that user in Hornbill, and again we're going to use the Hornbill integration bridge, and we're going to use the um, Hornbill admin create new user account. And again, we'll be using the key safe credentials that were defined against our Hornbill authentication that we created. And again here, what we're going to do is complete the, the mandatory options, which again is creating that email, which will be a mirror of what we did in Azure, their first name by passing through the, custom, the value in the custom A field, specifying their language, last name, again, pulling through that temporary password that had been created by our generator into the password field, uh, on here, maybe put some uh, telephony numbers and also specify the user ID, which in this case is going to match our Azure because it's going to be the value held in the custom C field. On top of that, though, we might also want to allocate that user some roles in Hornbill so that we, or oh, sorry, roles and membership to groups so that we can automatically subscribe them to the relevant services they will need based on the role and the job that they're joining the business in. So, here again, we're going to use another example where we're going to use the Hornbill integration bridge, we're going to use the uh, admin associate, associate user to role, in this case the collaboration role, uh, and again we're going to define the collaboration role, and we're going to take 
the output parameter from our previous create user and hornbill to set the user ID that will be attributed that role. And we're going to repeat that for a self-service role so they can immediately access self-service. And then again, we're going to use a similar one to add that user to a company group. On this occasion, it's going to be the company Arrayas. We're going to define their membership type. And again, their user ID will be the user ID field that we've specified here. Finally, once we've done that, based on them potentially joining the sales department, we might set them up again with an account in Salesforce. So here again, it's back to the iBridge, it's back to the Salesforce user and user create option. We'll use the credentials that were defined in our uh, keep safe uh, in order to make sure we've got the rights to create that user. And again, we're going to pass through values like alias, email, uh, forename, uh, the instance on uh, Salesforce that we're going to add this user to, etc. And again, all of the, the mandatory values that need to be created. So with that in mind, let's go and have a look at how that, um, how that works and how that performs. So we'll just switch context here and we'll go and have a look at uh, self-service, possibly as a manager that wants to uh, onboard and initiate this. So we're going to go to our management services and we're going to go to onboard that new employee. So here we can specify the user's details. So we're going to put their first name uh, and their surname. And on this occasion, they're going to be joining our sales team. So they're going to join as an account manager. Perhaps they're joining later in the month. And as I say here, they're going to join the sales team. Obviously, these questions are going to be important as we looked at in terms of mapping and creating those accounts. Because they're joining our sales team, we do want to give them access to Salesforce. And we're going to go ahead uh, and raise that new starter request. On doing so, the requester will see the heads up display, which is going to talk about the fulfillment steps, which might be a combination of automated and manual actions. But if we come back and have a look at this from an a, a analyst perspective, who's going to pick up on this? We can see the notification relating to the new starter request. We can drop in and we can see it's already been assigned to the team. But on picking this up, I'm going to take ownership of that myself. And that's then going to mark the relevant checkpoint on the request and move us through to the fulfillment side. This is now where it's going to go ahead and it's going to look to run through those steps. So initially, it's going to look to create the user in Azure. Then it's going to look to create the user in Hornbill allocate the relevant roles as we looked at in the design, add the user to the relevant group, and now go ahead and create that same user in Salesforce. Now in doing so, and just by way of an example, I have written the user's name and password into the timeline. Uh, obviously for demo purposes, I'm not going to expose the, the password for you, but I'm going to go ahead and, and grab those and just show you an example uh, that the, this user now exists and that you can log into the various uh, systems. So the first one, that we'll have a look at is Azure. And we'll just go in there and we'll take the username. So that's going to be Joe Burgess at .com. And we'll just pass in that password. And we can see here now that Joe uh, is logged in. Let's go to Office 365. So we'll just, uh, we'll just log Joe out of that. At the same time, we're going to come into Salesforce here and we'll just do a quick search for Joe. And we can see here that Joe uh, has been created, um, which is last modified today. And finally, what we'll do is we'll come across to Self Service Portal on Hornbill here and we'll log Joe in. Just have a look at that uh, he can log in and also the services that he will be entitled to based on the roles and groups that he uh, was assigned. So here we can see that Joe has immediate access to desktop support and the link service based on his roles and groups. Thanks for watching.